Avengers Assemble! Hi Hit Point friends, Jeremy here again with another Take One movie review. This time we are discussing Avengers Endgame. Oh, let me tell you, getting the day of this recording to get to this point to actually record this video has been very difficult. It was just one thing after another today, and <laughs> I was very tempted to not even record. Uh, I meant to start recording in the morning, and it is now after 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and had some troubleshooting issues. My phone started messed up last night, and I got to go and get that looked at today. Oh, it was just very stressful and was not able to get into recording like I wanted. It's actually going to be recording multiple things today, but that did not happen. So I'm at least doing this video. I really wanted to do this after doing the uh, tier rankings for the EMCU. If you want to see that video, uh, the link is in the, in the description below and should pop up also up here. Um, see so if you want to see that video, click there. Um, but after doing that ranking, I really did want to do an in-game review. Uh, just with it being now over a year since we had the last MCU movie, Far From Home. And we have potentially, hopefully in November, Black Widow coming out. But who knows with the pandemic going on still. So let's jump into the review. Uh, as always, starting with the first category of artistry. Uh, the directors of this movie are the Russo brothers. This is their fourth time directing an MCU movie. Uh, started with Winter Soldier, did Captain America Civil War, and then Infinity War, and now Endgame. Uh, you can definitely see the consistency of just the way they choose to direct things um, and, and how they edit it. I will just start off by saying they did a fantastic job when it came to editing these movies. Um, the visual effects as well are top notch. Uh, it is a lot of it CGI, and you can see that with some of them, so it, it's not perfect. Uh, just because of the amount of CGI they had to use, especially in the bigger fights, because you have a lot of people there. You can't have that many extras, so there's a lot of CGI, and you can tell. Um, and editing wasn't perfect either. Uh, there is one scene where, after, let's put it this way, Ant-Man's giant at one point, and he shrinks down to normal size and is helping out, um, trying to go find the van uh, on the battlefield. And it cuts to a scene with Black Panther running with the uh, gauntlet. And you see Giant Man in the background. So editing definitely wasn't perfect from that standpoint. When you have something so huge, it's understandable. But it's not an excuse. Someone on the editing team should have caught that. And they should have used some different clips to take away that to have that some consistency remain. Um, I will say this, though. When it, we talk about CGI... Uh, the de-aging CGI that they used in this, uh, fantastic for some of the stuff that's uh, back in the past. Uh, that, they did a great job uh, for the de-aging CGI. They've, it wasn't the first time they've used it. Every time they've used it, though, it's just fascinating how they're able to actually make the people look like how they did when they were younger. Uh, so that just stuck out more. And I did mention the big fights and how they had to have a lot of CGI, but the choreography that is used for those fights, man, the... The stunt doubles and the actors that go through that choreography and can pull it off when you're majority of being in, being in front of a green screen, it, it just speaks to their talent. And it's really it was really cool of to see this the, those fights being able to go so well and people just hit the timings that they needed to um, for each scene. Um, like I said, CGI, uh, very much CGI fights as well. But just the times when it actually was a person, they captured that very well. Speaking of that massive fight scene, just being able to pull that off is a feat within itself. They had so many actors, so many extras, so many people for the portal scene where people are showing up that that is just to pull that off. Uh, that was a feat within of, of its own. And lastly, like the most Avengers movies at this point, the film score is iconic. It has it's iconic so much so because it has lasted over multiple movies, and you feel the emotion that comes with that film score during the specific scenes of of Endgame. 
like with the portal scene and even the end credits like you just when you hear that music you immediately identify it now especially the main theme for the avengers um so amazing 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 film score nothing to complain on that so within the category of artistry um i would give avengers endgame a nine out of ten it's not perfect it's still really good but some of the editing choices and the mistakes they had in editing that keeps it from having a perfect score in the next category of course is talent and what i would just have to say right off the bat which has been the case for a while each actor in this film does a fantastic job with their character they are their character they make it believable you we've been through it a lot of movies through the thick and thin with them and so again just the talent is there you see that in all the actors and how they're able to portray their characters and they're phenomenal actors so not much else to say when it comes to the acting capabilities it's they're all amazing one in person though that does stick out is definitely chris hemsworth uh what he ended up doing with thor was oh man just a huge standout he stood above everybody else in this movie and just what he was able to do with the Thor character and the depth that he continued to add to that character. Um, and just, wow, yeah, just there's a lot. Like, if you if you haven't seen Endgame, you need to at least see that uh, just to see how he's able to pull off what he did. Lastly, just in the category of talent, I'll get more into this when I talk about story. The portrayal of the psychological feelings that the characters are having the actors portrayed that extremely well just the psychological um conflict within each character and how they're dealing with grief and how they're dealing with the aspects of things that had happened to them man the actors did a fantastic job of really portraying that that added some depth into a marvel movie that had not existed yet so in the category of talent definitely giving this movie a 10 out of 10 hands down 10 out of 10 Next, we get into the category of story. Um, this will definitely be probably the longest time, uh, segment of today's uh, uh, review because uh, there's a lot here to unpack within the story of Endgame. Uh, first off, I'm just going to say, though, the decision to start with Hawkeye and his family was a very good idea. It felt like a continuation from Infinity War and just sucked you right back into the story and made you wonder, okay, what's happening next? And so from that standpoint, to jump ahead in time was a great idea. To jump ahead five years, now that took some guts. And it added a lot to the story that wouldn't have been there without that five-year jump. And like I mentioned it before in the talent section of how just the portrayal of psychological feelings, how the actors really did a good job with that, that's really where this comes into play. It's very interesting as I've watched Endgame a few times now to really view the main Avenger characters very much representing different stages of grief. At the After that five-year period, you've got uh, Nat, who is for sure showing um, the stage of denial, where she wants to keep on pushing on, doesn't want to give up. They have to keep on doing things, and things have to get better somehow, and she won't give up to that hope and is in this big state of denial. Cap is in also Cap's also in denial, but it's more so a he portrays a false appearance of accepting where things are at by trying to help people move on, but while himself internally he hasn't even moved on. So both Nat and Cap really just they are in that stage of denial when it comes to grief. And then you've got Hawkeye, who we don't get to see a lot of what happens with him between the beginning of the movie and where he ends up five years later which i will say this is sad and is a knock a little bit on the story like the hawkeye wasn't in infinity war at all and then they bring him into endgame and you don't get to see his progression of how he gets to the point where he is because i would say hawkeye for sure shows the stage of anger of when you come into the stages of grief he is so upset with what has happened and he is taking it out by murdering people and with justifying it based off the fact that they didn't lose their lives, but good people did. So he's going to rectify that and take out the bad people. But you don't get to see that progression of how he got to that point and how long it took him to make that decision to actually kill somebody. And so from that standpoint, it, it would have been nice to see that actual downfall because 
later on when we get to the scene with him and Black Widow trying to get the Soul Stone, it makes that scene less impactful where he's trying to attempt to sacrifice himself. Like It's still impactful because we've had that character for a while, but to, for him to get to that anguish where he's like, I'm ready to just sacrifice myself and end it all based off what I've become, we don't really connect as much with that as an audience because we had it didn't actually get to see that progress. So that's a little bit of a knock on the story. It would have been cool for that to actually been shown. But still, really good movie. Then we get to uh, the state of acceptance as well. There's one character, which is the one character you wouldn't think would be in the stage of acceptance when it comes to the stages of grief, but it's Tony. Tony has completely moved on. Him and Pepper are together living in a cabin out in the woods, and they have a daughter. And they're on a lake. And he's living life. He has moved on, and he's developed a life, and he wants that life to stay and wants to protect it. And he acknowledges things are so sad of what happened, but it's time to actually continue on with life and have life. And that's really crazy because you wouldn't think that Tony would be the person that'd be in that stage based off of his experience so far of what he's had in his life. He's gone through so many other things where he couldn't let go and just had to fix things and make the world a better place. He, he just never was able to move on. And he's finally reached a point where he can and he has a family. Total difference. There's just the person you would expect to, the least to be in that stage of acceptance would have been Tony. Other person I'd say who also has accepted where things are is Bruce. I mean, you got to see how he became uh, a mixture of Bruce and the Hulk, Smart Hulk. And that, I mean, it showed he had accepted where things were as well. He had moved on. And he had also grown as a person to where he was able to reconcile the two halves of himself. Again, from a story perspective, it would have been really nice to see that. Uh, I know that has a huge complaint for a lot of people is that you didn't get to see him become smart Hulk. He just is already that. And I, who knows if there will ever be a movie showing how that actually happened. But that was sad. I, for me personally, I would have, more so than the Hawkeye thing, I would have liked to see how Hulk and Banner merged together. And how that actually played out. So again, a little bit of a knock just from the character development and things we didn't get to see over that five-year span. Would have been nice to see some of that background. But yeah, again, Bruce uh, slash Smart Hulk, definitely in that stage of acceptance. Uh, so the last person to get to is Thor. And Thor is for sure in the stage of depression. There's a little bit of mixture of denial there, but he's definitely in the stage of depression. We get to Thor. And he has gained, he has become super overweight and just wanting to avoid anything in life that could cause some negative feelings. And he just is definitely just pursuing things that make him feel good, even if it's a false sense of feeling good. Um, so definitely in that stage of depression. So like I said, it's just very interesting. It's just the portrayal of psychological feelings and just seeing this as with the characters, all, all of them kind of representing different stages of grief. Um, and after losing half of civilization and a lot of them being close friends, how wouldn't you be going through different stages of grief? So that's a huge trauma. Definitely, definitely, definitely something that was, I don't know if that was intentional from the directors, but if it was, genius move and an amazing um, illustration of what how grief can look and differently for people in different stages. That was definitely a long section. Um, but I will just say, uh, Endgame itself is a very epic story. Um, it had great pacing. It didn't feel like a three hour movie. Um, it's just one thing after another and boom, 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 which definitely made it feel like a roller coaster and not in a bad way. It was just a lot going on, but there was a lot of things that happened in the movie that were so epic and scenes that are just going to last with fans for a long time that, Definitely, definitely made it in a very good movie. The one thing I will also just say really quick, touching on the grief thing, it made all these superheroes very much feel human, that they struggle with the same things that all of us do. I do want to touch on Cap a little bit. Cap's definitely trying to convince himself to move on. He's constantly been a man, kind of in a foreign world. Um, he's been a man out of time ever since he came out of the ice. And he's had, and so this is just another stage where he's trying to convince himself to move on. Um, so I want to touch on one thing and then I'm just going to go into some highlights with the story. 
I've heard a lot of complaints online of people saying that Endgame was a disservice to some of the characters because it seemed like their character had completely changed from what from what was recognizable. Tony being one because of the fact that he was not at the point of trying to keep on fixing things. But I, sh I think that shows character growth um, and also him being the one to sacrifice himself at the end. Spoiler alert. Sorry. If you haven't seen Endgame, I don't know why you're watching this review. It's been out for over a year. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, with Tony sacrificing himself at the end, like a lot of people thought that didn't really fit his character either. Um, and that he would have been smart enough to try some different avenues rather than just using all the stones, but it shows the growth that he had had. And he was at that point of where he, he knew to bring everyone back. He had to do exactly what they had tried to do. Or not to bring everyone back. To get rid of Thanos, he had to do exactly what they had done to get everyone to come back. I don't really look at that being a, a disservice to his character. I think that shows growth of that he was willing to be the person to do that. Which he showed that a little bit in the original Avengers when he took the missile and launched it into space. He was willing to sacrifice himself. So I think that's a continuation as well from there. That he has shown before he's willing to do whatever it takes to save humanity. The other person that a lot of people had issues with were Cap, or was Cap. Um, they felt what happened with Cap was a totally cha total change of character as well. The fact that at the end of everything, he was willing to take all the stones back and stay back in time and, and stay with Peggy and not come back. Everyone looked at that as being a very big disservice to the character. Captain America would never do something like that. And yet, maybe in the comics, Cap would never would do that. But this is a movie, and this is an adaptation of that character, and a, and a character that has gone through a lot of trauma. He has gone through three traumas, and only one did he actually choose. That being when he sacrificed himself and got frozen in the ice. I'm sure when he crashed the plane, he didn't expect to get frozen in ice. He thought he would probably die. And so it was, it was definitely sad at that point. But then he got frozen in ice and came back to life 70 years later, and he's in a totally different world and has lost everyone he ever knew. And so there's trauma one, number one. And then trauma number two being of when they lost everyone, half of the world, when they lost the Thanos. I mean, he just, he lost Bucky again. And he lost, so he lost his best friend. Tony was off in the who knows where. And just every, half the population was gone. So there's trauma number two that he's still trying to recover from where he failed along with the rest of the team. And then trauma number three that happens at the end where he loses Tony, a friend who, yes, he had a lot of issues with, but it was still a friend. So you try being a person, superpowers or not, that goes through three traumas in their life like that and not change at all. How can we expect the character to actually represent what a, potential, a human goes through when trauma hits and not expect their character to change? So it doesn't surprise me at the end that when Cap's given the opportunity to actually have a life and go back in time and have that life with Peggy that he lost, that he takes it finally. As he said, as he says at the end, well, after I put the stones back, I thought maybe I'll try some of that life. Tony was telling me to get everything that had happened to him in his life up to that point had finally made him snap. Where he's like, you know what? I've done a lot. I've sacrificed a lot. And it may come across as selfish, but I got to take care of some of my own needs and I need to have a life. And I know there's the argument, well, but then he lived through all these times where he knew Hydra was in S.H.I.E.L.D. and he knew this was going on, that was going on, and he did nothing about it. It's like, well, yeah, because if he would have done things differently when he was back there, then he's potentially creating alternate timelines. And he wanted to for sure get to the point where he could come back as an old man and see everybody, which I know there's a lot of debate for there. I'll gladly debate that in the comments if you want of was the nerd, did he create an alternate timeline by going back in time or because the fact the only thing he changed was marrying Peggy potentially, if that was actually a change, because there's some debate on that. Was he able to stay in the same timeline and just become an old man in the timeline because he didn't really change anything else? Don't know. I, like I said, I'll debate that if you want to debate that <laughs> enough of being on my soapbox with the characters and just some of the things I've read online and people said, 
I want to give you some highlights of some things I thought were really cool that were part of the story. So first one, Scott Lang, Ant-Man, continued to bring some amazing humor into the movie. Man, I love that character. He is so funny, and he just brings a lot of humor. Like when he meets with Nat and Cap, he's like, whose sandwich is that? I'm starving. <laughs> like just out of nowhere. Um, the aspect for Nat, for Black Widow, I thought was really cool for her, that she kind of, you saw that progression as her as a character. She went from coming in Iron Man 2 as being a distrustful spy to where she has now grown to what I would call like being the dutiful soldier, um, willing to do whatever it takes to accomplish the mission. Really cool growth there. Uh, the elevator scene with Cap was pure gold. Uh, it was reminiscent of a callback to the elevator scene in Winter Soldier, but when he whispers in their ear, Hail Hydra, oh, that just had me laughing and was a great homage to uh, what was going on in the comic book world at that time where Cap was revealed to be a Hydra spy, and I didn't, I haven't read it, so I don't remember, all, I don't actually know all the details, but it was really cool to see that in there. It was just it was like being a callback to Winter Soldier, but also just since he used that insider knowledge, knowing that all those guys in there were part of Hydra to be able to take the uh, spear. Really good scene. Um, but then, I mean, just the aspect of all the characters were saying it, whatever it takes, they had to do whatever it takes to get everyone back. The fact that they had all been dealing with this trauma of losing half the population for so long and now arrived to a point where there really did seem to be hope they had to be whatever it takes and that was part of going back to that i mean i've been i've been really preaching on it but going back to that whole stages of grief stuff that's what it shows is they're like if this doesn't work now like this is our last hope and if it doesn't work we're going to be devastated and so whatever it takes we will do whatever it takes to make it happen and just that mantra is just a, it really added into the story of just really escalating it and and really creating odds that these guys that the heroes had to overcome that were bigger than anything they had dealt with before and yeah it did add a lot of good moments with them being able to go back in time kind of a celebration of all the movies that came beforehand but it also created some character depth and some closure for people tony got to see his dad and have that closure that he never really had before and thor went and got to have some closure with his mom and like just dealing with some issues of things that had been building in some of the characters and the losses that they had, people got to have closure. So that'd be the other thing I'd say is this movie really provided closure for a lot of the main characters. And that's really cool to see, especially as you as we don't know how if any of them are going to come back or how much longer they'll be around. So that was really good. So in the category of story, you may have figured out I, I very much like the story, but like I even said, there's a couple things I wish they would have included. So I'm not going to give it a 10 out of 10 because there are some things where I wish, like with Hawkeye and, and Smart Hulk, they would have included that stuff. And and I'm even going to say this now. Of the storyline is a little convoluted, um, and there are some convenient plot holes and things that people have brought up. And I don't disagree with those things, so I'm not going to give it a perfect score. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Um, it's not perfect, just like the artistry section. It's not perfect, so I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. So last we come to the category of overall enjoyment. And I greatly enjoyed this movie. It is. It was a climax to everything that, had come, that had come before, and it paid off tremendously. Even with the faults, some of the faults in the story and even some editing choices, it still was really good and something I really enjoyed myself as a Marvel fan. Um, but I want to be able to gauge this really as a movie itself, and so it's not a perfect movie, as you've seen as I've scored these other things. But for me, for overall enjoyment, I'm giving this movie a 10 out of 10 because I thoroughly enjoyed it. I still enjoy it now. I saw this movie three times opening weekend. Um, I think all one day after another, and maybe even four. I don't remember, because I saw it on opening night on Thursday. I saw it on Friday. I saw it on Saturday. I can't remember if I saw it on Sunday or not opening weekend. But I know I saw it at least three times opening weekend, and I enjoyed it every time I watched it, and I still enjoy it today when I watch it. When I rewatched it in preparation for this review, I loved it. And for me, ten out of ten. Um, as a summary for the movie, I would say it's an epic conclusion 
that has a lot of payoff for the Marvel fans that are out there, giving them some of the scenes they've wanted to see for a long time, but also deals with loss and tragedy, which is a good is a tale, whereas a and is an illustration of something we can all learn from and can pull from and see that it's okay to go through grief and realize there are different stages. And the best thing we can do is to be there for each other during during it. And lastly, before I give you all the final score, let's just remember, one rat saved everyone. If you don't know what I mean by that, you need to go back and look at when Ant-Man comes back. One rat saved everyone. So as a final score, this movie would get a 9.5 out of 10. It is a must-see you need to see this movie. If you're a Marvel fan, for sure, you need to see this movie if you haven't yet. But as an overall movie, I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. Like I said, it was a rough time to get to this point of being able to do this review, so I'm glad I was able to do it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to crush that like button. Subscribe if you have not yet. We still have a lot more coming out for the channel. There will be more movie reviews coming. This has been Jeremy with Take One Movie Reviews. Go watch more movies.